When I was in medical school and throughout my medical journey, Google was easily my best friend to be able to look up things, but I did wish it could be a little bit more super. But thankfully with the introduction of more public artificial intelligence software such as ChatGPT, that has now become a reality. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ChatGPT, essentially imagine Google, but instead of asking a question and saying links, you can say, Google, go ahead and show me, for example, how far is the moon from the earth? And it's gonna go ahead and split out an entire distance. But now you can continue this conversation. You can say, how far would it take light to travel back and forth? So we can already see that unlike Google, this is basically continuing a conversation if I'm having it with the smartest person alive that has access to the entire internet. So now imagine using this software for your medical journey and we're gonna talk about some sick ways you can do this to make your studying an entire medical journey a whole lot easier. Let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and start a new chat. But number one is going to be be able to create templated emails. So ChatGBT does well with prompts. This basically means that imagine talking to somebody and give them some context of who you are. So I'm gonna say, Remember that I'm a med student. So it's gonna say something along the lines of, yes, I'll keep that in mind, how can I help? Perfect. So now we're gonna use ChatGPT for our first utility, which is being able to send templated emails. Let's say you wanted to shadow somebody. You can essentially ask ChatGPT to make a templated email for you. So you can just write, I'm a pre-med student, I wanna shadow someone in neurology, please write me a templated email to shadow them. Let's see what we get. So within maybe what, 10 seconds, we're able to get this big spiel of something that you'd probably find as a template online in Google, but may take you some time to actually see if it's something of good quality. But this is a great starter template. Dear Dr. So and so, I'm interested in the field of neurology. I came across your website or your article or whatever, and I'm interested in the field of neuro. Let me know if I can shadow you. And just put that name, done. And you can go ahead and make this more personalized, but it saved you so much time in just a few seconds. In the same fashion, maybe you want to do research somebody. You can go to say, I want to do research and it's going to go ahead and come up with something but if you're a pre-med student you can easily see you can just plug and play your name and go ahead and add the aspects that make them understand that you listen to what they said without having to waste all this time writing this stuff and you can go ahead and adjust this for where things sound a little too formal or too repetitive and then boom you can send that email very cool. So now the next one is super speed, but you can use artificial intelligence to be able to look through a PowerPoint or lecture and use it to come up with questions for yourself. So let's take this lecture, for example, which is about atrial fibrillation. And let's say I want to come up with some questions for just this slide alone. So I can just go ahead and copy this and then come back into ChatGPT and saying, make me some questions from this slide. And then boom, I can just copy the actual thing and then there you go, it's already starting to type. Within seconds, I'm being able to get things that would be questions from that slide. And keep in mind, not all of this will be relevant, but simply being able to see the variety of questions that you can be able to ask, turn this into a question or answer document, turning it into flashcards, or if you want a bonus tip, you can basically say, now convert these questions and answers. And again, within seconds, it's already making me a freaking table with the questions that it made. If at any point you feel like the answer you've gotten is enough or it's not heading in the right direction, you can easily click stop. And so I can take this table and move it into an Excel sheet. So this is an example that we use for a lot of our coaching students. If you guys are interested in that, that'll be linked down below. But I can go ahead and just pull this into another sheet and just go ahead and copy and just quickly reformat. That's all I have to do. And now I have all those questions from that slide and I can just do this for the entirety of the lecture and take out all the questions that I don't feel are relevant or kind of duplicate. And now I have an entire document with questions and answers, really didn't have to lift a finger. Now, the third utility to use for ChatGPT is to use it for applications, pretty much for anything, whether you're applying for residency, your personal statements, let me give you a few kind of ways you can do this. So let's say you're applying a cardiology fellowship, because that's what I just did a few months ago, and you want to come up with an outline for your personal statement. By no means do I recommend using artificial intelligence to draft a personal statement, because you can tell when it's very still formatted. Um, and keep in mind, if somebody else does this, it may sound very familiar. So instead, you can use AI to go ahead and actually create an outline. So you can say, write an outline for, and again, within seconds, I have bullets of pretty much what it's recommending that I type in for the various different parts of my essay. 
And since we're talking about personal statements, if you guys are interested in a workshop that we have for you to be able to write a personal statement just perfectly for you, just go ahead and add the comments down below and I'll send you a link. But this is a great start, essentially giving me an introduction on how to hook my reader and then be able to give backgrounds and qualifications and ultimately go ahead and conclude it with why I want to go into the field of cards, giving me all the things that I know somebody within cardiology would want to read about, like my publications, research experiences, clinical, etc. And on a similar note, you can use ChatGPT to essentially be able to condense and improve and correct something like your resume. So I can go ahead and take my resume right here and go ahead and just change something. So I can say, here is my resume, please condense it and fix any grammar and spelling. Now it's not gonna go ahead and reformat by anything, but it's gonna go ahead and just look through it and saying, let's go ahead and take some parts out. So I can already see how this is making things more condensed, maybe a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, for example, it's already taking away all the names of the research papers and just saying that I wrote six of them. Uh, but you can use this as a starter and then ask it to be a little less condensed um, and it will do that for you. Now number two on our list is to use ChatGBT to be able to help improve how you write notes. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and write a differential diagnosis or a management plan, you can say something along the lines of something like this, where I'm a third year medical student, I want you to be able to write me a management plan um, for somebody with these problems. And I basically said this patient has diverticulitis, ischemic colitis, pyelonephritis, or all these things as differentials, and it's gonna ideally spit out the various things that I need it to do. So you can already see that it's telling me to order the proper antibiotics, to do imaging, to make sure I treat their pain. And if I wanted an individual management plan for each, I could do that as well. On another similar aspect, if I wanted to write a soap note, let's say, write me a soap note. So again, by no means should you be using this as a tool to copy and take away work. It should be used as a tool as a reference of how can I do this better, or what are some ideas of what this would look like. And then finally, number one, and probably the coolest to play with with ChatGPT is to being able to use it to create differential diagnoses. So imagine if you were thinking about a patient or you're reading about a new case for tomorrow, and you wanted to come up with all the different things of what to consider. Let's say you are dealing with somebody who's coming in with chest pain. You can have ChatGPT on your phone or pulled up in the desktop and saying, come up with a differential diagnosis of 10 for someone, let's say, let's say has chest pain to the back. And within seconds, I'm gonna be able to have a list of the things that can cause chest pain go to the back. Number one, dissection, that's very true. Number two, myocardial infarction. All of these are awesome, actually. This is a very good list of, of 10 to consider. And then if I wanted more information on the first one, let's say I wanted to come up with like, okay, um, tell me the management plan for, and then you can just copy the things from your list. And it's going to break it down based off the individual ones I gave. So for aortic dissection, it's going to essentially give me this is a medical emergency, these are things I need to do. Again, these are not what you copy into your note by no means, but you can see what a sample note would look like or what the thought process would look like for each of these things. Um, so make sure you give them aspirin if they're having a heart attack. Um, evaluate their EKGs if you haven't done so already. Um, and then if they're having an end STEMI, then consider something like heparin. So those are some really cool ways of using ChatGPT on your medical journey. But just to end off this episode, I wanna talk about some cool ways that I could easily use this as a full-time physician. For example, I could easily have this pulled up instead of UpToDate or Google. And as I'm reading about a patient, maybe I have a question. Let's say I have a patient who's back to remit. They have blood cultures that are positive. Maybe they have a UTI. And I wanna see how long I should treat them for. So you can say, how long? should I treat gram negative bacteremia? And then just to make it more fun, and please add citation. It's always nice to be polite to your AI technology, right? So add the please. So it's already starting to give me kind of guidelines from associations, but seven to 14 days, which is what we treat, which is accurate. And so I'm making sure, and then ideally it starts to give me some citations. So IDS guidelines, and then boom, actually adds an article I can look through. So if somebody tells me you're wrong, but this is where I got it from, make sure I read it first. And you can already start to see that it's adding additional information in addition to what I asked for. And I can say, please give me more citations. And just like a conversation, I don't have to copy and paste my initial question. It can say, I already understand what you had asked me first, so here are a few more citations you can use. This is perfect for research papers. This is perfect for if you're having to do kind of a presentation and 
um, a lecture or a rotation. This is awesome for all of those things. So just from these five plus that one bonus example, you can see that AI technology like ChatGPT is really gonna change really how we access information and process it to make it a little bit more easy for the questions specifically that we have. Now, full disclaimer, by no means should you use this on your medical journey to replicate work that you otherwise have to do to become a good doctor, to become a good student, but by all means, use it to find cool and creative ways of how you can minimize the busy work that doesn't help in your overall learning, like converting something into a table or getting questions you can start with as a good foundation to learn something a little bit better. In full disclosure, I am still actively learning how to use tools like ChatGPT to help myself on my journey a little bit better. So if there's something that I missed, go ahead and add it in the comment section here. Here's a cool thing that you could do. Here's an example. Go ahead and share with myself and the rest of the community in the comment section. And while you're down there, hit that like button if you really did appreciate this video and this episode. But as always, my friends, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and check out this episode right here on the top strategies that I used in medical school to go ahead and get a 3.9 GPA, as well as this one right here, which is our most popular episode here on YouTube on how to use one of my favorite tools to study a little bit faster, actually a lot faster. Go ahead and check that out. If you enjoyed this episode, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for being part of my journey. Hopefully we were a little help to you guys on yours. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.